Hello fellow flippers, Kevin McCormick here from Fine Flip Profit. Just wanted to record a short video for you here. Wanted to show you something that you may have overlooked when you're on your uh, eBay seller hub page and you're looking at uh, different activities and things that are going on. If you go all the way over to the right here um, on the main part of the seller hub page, you'll see an item that says growth and has a little word beta off to the right of it. Um, they've got a tool in there called a sourcing guidance tool. And if you click on growth and then you click on sourcing, then it takes you to this page right here. Um, and this sourcing guidance page really is a way to give you some kind of an insight as to what items are selling on eBay, an average price that they're selling for, and the seasonality of that item. Um, it's not as specific as you're going to get on some of the paid uh, seller tools that are out there, um, but it's something that if you don't have the budget or the desire to have those paid seller tools, this gives you a little bit of insight, especially if you're looking for things additional to sell above your normal inventory that maybe you hadn't thought about or hadn't really given a lot of looks for when you're out and about and you are doing your sourcing. So let's go and look at a category like books. Um, books is a category that sells pretty regularly, pretty frequently. Um, let's go to nonfiction books. And just to give you a run through of what the tool looks like here. At the top, there's two categories. There's new and there's used. And if you click on new, it shows you the seasonality um, where it's peaking from the end of the year going into the beginning of the year. Dips in the middle of June and July, which everyone pretty much knows that. And then it picks back up towards the end of the year again. Uh, the price breakdown here over to the right is, uh, you know, an average price for the past 12 months is less than $20. Um, and then there seems to be an opportunity of 20% of the volume for the past 12 months in this category of nonfiction books between $20 and $100. I see that as an opportunity. I see that as something that, um, that you could do uh, in looking for books in that category. And I'll show you how to get dig down just a little bit deeper here in just a second. I'm going to focus on use because that's what I'm normally looking for when I'm out at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, wherever I happen to pick up product. I'm rarely buying things new in that type of situation. You see the seasonality is very much the same, uh, dipping in the summer um, and then peaking as we get towards the end of the year. 89% of the price is average under $20 and uh, only 10% in the $20 to $100 range. Still an opportunity, but perhaps not as big as on the new side. But this really go speaks to, you know, as the old saying goes, you make your money when you buy, not when you sell. So if you buy your product for the right price and you're able to sell it for around $20, $15 to $20 maybe, you're still making a good profit. And if you've got a good process for shipping those things out, uh, packing and shipping those things out, then you can still make money and do it in a high volume sort of way. So the top opportunities, um, the format for books, format being leather, uh, hardcover, softcover, that kind of thing. You know, they show you that leather bound books um, have the biggest growth opportunity score. And you say, what's a growth opportunity score? You click on the little eye there and it tells you how eBay thinks that you can sell more of an item within that specific category on eBay. And they look at previous items sold in that category um, and then they give a comparison to what's currently in the eBay inventory of all the things that we as sellers list and sell. Um, and they show an item if they think it can outperform the category. They don't show negative scores and it's not a guarantee obviously they have to put that in there but the higher the score the higher the potential and that's basically what it is. And um, they give you some more detail about you know how they come up with the score but that's that's neither here nor there right now. So you see that leather bound books are popular, have the highest potential at 86. Uh, hardcover, which is what most people usually go for, 81%. Uh, paperbacks are popular at 77%. Um, different type of hardback at 71. So these sometimes look repetitive, but it just gives you an indication that hardbound books are a little bit more popular than paperbacks. When you go into the subject, the Bible has always been the best-selling book, regardless of whether it's uh, new or used, apparently. Religion and spirituality books uh, are always popular. Transportation books, that's kind of interesting. I never thought I'd see that up there. Art and photography books right here. That's always a popular category. If you get good art and photography books when you're, especially like at estate sales, maybe used bookstores, 
these are something to keep an eye on that you can sell and make money on uh, within eBay. Health and fitness also is, uh, is a popular thing. Comic books are up there, um, and you can see some of the other categories that are there. Uh, if you go to the genre, um, I like that word, genre. Nonfiction books, which is the category that we're in, uh, obviously that's going to be high. Jazz books are at 42. Uh, publication year, interesting, they give that, 1995. I don't know why that's such a popular year. 2016 probably because that's a new uh, newer edition of something that's out there it's very high at 75 as well and gives you other years that apparently are popular years of publication um, this one shows age group obviously adult uh, top combinations health and fitness paperback book uh, 73 average sales price $25.80 so if you're in the health and fitness category and there's a book that was, you know, written in the past three or four years. Um, it might be something to look at. You'd have to dig a little bit deeper to try to figure out exactly what's driving that price. But that's something that you could poke around in this thing. And you can get down into the detail down here to maybe get that little bit more granularity in terms of what is selling in that health and fitness nonfiction category for $25.80. Um, this gives you like a top 10 when you expand on the box. It gives you a top 10 and it gives you the average price all the way across. Another one averaging over $20, religion and spirituality, uh, nonfiction, roughly 1985. Not sure what books were published in that, in that category, but apparently it's popular because it's averaging $21.67. So you have to take into account that an average is an average, right? Um, an average is... A, you know the average of a lot of different transactions if you really were to dig down into this like I say down here and clicking on specific categories you'd be able to kind of get a better sense as for what's driving an average and probably be able to find a nugget of a book or type of book that really would drive um, the price and give you something that you can really hang your head on this is more of a generality level here but it's got some opportunities to dig down low, to dig down deeper at a more granular level and find something that's truly an opportunity. So, um, and you know, you can go back to the back to the beginning up here. Just click on sourcing again. It takes you back to the top of the uh, top of the search category, and you know, you could go into another category, say like cameras. Uh, you go into digital cameras, and you know, you see the seasonality. That's a little bit more flat than I expected. It dips more in January, February than it does in the summer, like most things. But it definitely picks back up at the end of the year. The price breakdown is a little different. The opportunity is in $100 to $500 range. That's kind of interesting. Digital SLRs are the most popular, right? Uh, the brand I expect to see, oh, GoPro is the most popular brand. I expect to see Canon and Nikon and Sony is a little bit of a surprise for me there. Uh, if they get down into the model, 5D Mark III is the most popular, Rebel T3i, once again. And then um, top combinations is a Nikon D3300, 24 megapixel, megapixels, average sales price, $373. Very interesting, T3i, $343. Canon 5D Mark III, 1700 $96 and you could get down into that granularity down here so this is a tool that I just wanted to um, to share with you a little bit for those of you that follow fine flip profit just because it may be something that you've overlooked um, I know you may go to your seller hub on a regular basis some of you maybe even every day but you just may not have clicked on the growth and the sourcing thing to find out exactly what's there and how it might be able to help you so hopefully this will help you do one of two things if you've already got inventory it'll help you see if what you have is in line with the areas that you're selling in, are you buying the right brands? And also, too, um, it will help you for inventory that you don't yet have. Maybe you're thinking about adding some different types of inventory to your uh, to your collection. And this may give you some insight as to what that different type of inventory may be. So hopefully that you will find this helpful. So this is Kevin McCormick for Find Flip Profit. I hope you found this little video review helpful. And um, keep finding, keep flipping.